Welcome back, everyone. In this segment, Mike Westervelt will be here to talk about This Week in Politics. We'll also find out how Purdue President Cordova's new sustainability plans are already going into effect. One of the newest and most innovative ways campuses and businesses are aiming to help the environment is by replacing their normal rooftops with green ones. These roofs help reduce impact on the environment as well as reduce costs in the long run. Kate Vanneman showcases this new technology. Purdue students can expect to see a new landmark on campus by the end of the spring semester. The Boiler Green Initiative recently received a grant to retrofit a section of the roof on Schleiman Hall. The roof will be fit with vegetation and more efficient tiles in a new green roof project. According to BGI Vice President Amelie Davis, when the club was first formed, it was solely dedicated to implementing green roofs across campus. The area chosen on Schleiman's Hall is ideal because of the terrace setup. The roof was also already flat and very easily accessible to students. Schleiman Hall has a terrace that's big enough, plus it's centrally located, so we thought a lot of students would be here because Schleiman is a hall of student services, you have financial aid, you have a business office for student organizations, so we really felt it was a great location. The roof has many environmentally friendly results. A normal roof repels 99% of all rainwater and also contaminates the water before it reaches the sewer. The green roof, on the other hand, repels only 1% of that same water and also helps absorb some of the heat and cold that would normally be absorbed by the building. This usually results in lower heating costs. You get stormwater runoff um, mitigation for um, small to large rainfall events. We, we also have, you have an habitat for insects and possibly some of the roofs that are more isolated, you can even have birds up there. So it's a microhabitat within a highly urban landscape. Like the core of the campus is 72% impervious. So all of a sudden you have this green space and it's got so many benefits. BGI is looking to expand the Green Roof Project to other buildings across campus as well, including the Mann Building and Discovery Park and the Horticultural Building. People can walk around the terrace like it is right now and there will also be picnic tables and benches so it's a usable space and an inviting space. Construction on the terrace is nearing completion with vegetation and tiles being brought in the last week of April. Students will then be able to enjoy the terrace by graduation. BGI plans on using the remaining grant money to monitor effects the Green Roof will have on the building and the environment. Reporting for Fast Track, I am Kate Vanneman. The Obama administration will investigate interrogation tactics used during the Bush years. Here's Mike Westervelt with more in This Week in Politics. After days of saying, no, we're not going to waste time on this, let's forget about it and move on, apparently President Obama is changing his mind. Mr. Obama says his attorney general will determine if anyone from the previous administration broke the law, specifically whether officials crafted a legal basis for using harsh and demeaning interrogation tactics. That includes waterboarding, which some people consider to be torture. There is no timeline as to when more information or possible allegations will become available. School safety versus protection against unreasonable searches. That's one question before the U.S. Supreme Court this week. Justices will make a ruling on the case of a 13-year-old honor student who was strip searched at her Stafford, Arizona high school. Officials there to were told she possessed prescription strength ibuprofen, but no drugs were found. Her lawyer argues the search was likened to sexual abuse, but administrators say it's their responsibility to keep children from being harmed by illegal drugs. U.S., US that is, Treasury Secretary Timothy Geithner has hope for the global economy. Geithner says already he is seeing signs of stabilization as the growth rate levels out. He adds that policymakers around the world may need to alter their strategies as conditions evolve. Finally, Mr. Obama is increasing funding of the AmeriCorps service program by $5.7 billion. The president, who was a community organizer himself, says the expanded program will create opportunities for all Americans. Over the next eight years, AmeriCorps will specifically help students earn cash. Sign me up. And that's your Week in Politics. I'm Mike Westervelt. Until next week, be well. Here at Purdue, it's not uncommon to have students from other nations in our classrooms. With over 5,500 students and 750 faculty members from all over the world, Purdue is known for its large international student population. Despite struggling world economies and difficulties acquiring a visa, Purdue continues to see a steady increase in international students. Fast Track reporter Rebecca Shalon has more. The influx of international students has been on the rise over the last decade, despite an increase in difficulty of acquiring student visas since September 11. I only got my visa about two weeks before I left, so I was freaking out about it. It was not fun. It cost a lot. It took a lot of time. I had to fly to another city to get it. 
Those who wish to study in the United States must prove to the consulate that they have evidence of financial support, admittance to an accredited college and strong family ties to their home country, thus making their stay in the US temporary. Since 1998, the number of Purdue students from outside the country has increased by over 47%. International students represent over 7% of the undergraduate community, as well as just under half of graduate student positions. We, we need students from around the world here because they, they bring a certain diversity that we wouldn't have without them. And they, they provide what I call a study abroad experience on our campus for students from Indiana. You take them out, then we have Hoosiers and fellow Americans, and that's too narrow a focus. Purdue ranks third in the U.S. for international students and second among public institutions. According to Director Michael Brzezinski, 2008 saw the largest number of applicants in university history. It seems that now, more than ever, students are realizing the impact an international experience can have on their lives. The importance of international interactions is not limited to others coming to Purdue. Each year, thousands of Purdue students travel to other countries to study. Reporting for Fast Track, I'm Rebecca Shalon. After the break, we'll hear from Fast Track sports correspondent Eric Markham and learn how some of the Boilermakers will fare in the upcoming draft. And we'll get an inside look at Fast Track's Spanish edition when Hector Campos reveals the safety of credit unions. Stay with us. WBAA, Public Radio from Purdue University.